Okay, so it's 11.30, so we're gonna get started. First of all, thank you so much for coming to a panel that is starting in the AM. I know it can be kind of difficult after a day of convention. <laughs> so this is cosplay planning, and this is, I think, possibly one of the most important steps in constructing your own costumes. First, a little bit about this panel. We're gonna go about halfway through, have a quick break for questions. So if you have a burning question, we'll have about two or three, and then we'll move on. We have a walkthrough at the end, and then we'll have hopefully some time for Q&A. So first, so that you know that I know what I'm talking about, I'm GT Cosplay. I've been cosplaying since 2012 and competing since 2014. I have competed, judged, and run some contests, and technically I'm a professional planner. I create plans, execute them, and I get evaluated how effective those plans are. So when it comes to planning, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Also, I'm completely of the mindset that planning cosplay, making cosplay, buying things for cosplay, and wearing cosplay are completely different hobbies. <laughs> and very much buying things for cosplay and planning cosplays are definitely where my passions lie. <laughs> so first, why do you want to plan? Because it's so easy once you have the favorite character, like the best girl or boy, and you're just like, yes, I'm going to be this character, and you want to start buying that fabric, buying the wigs and all that stuff. But when you take a second and really think and plan for it, over the long run, it's really going to help save time, stress, and hot glue, which honestly, that is the main goal. <laughs> Uh, also, it makes sure that you know what you're focusing your energy on. So the final outcome is something that you are very happy with and proud to wear. Over on the right, this is kind of what we are going to be using. This is a, a kind of a planning circle that most businesses use. That's kind of my background. And it's mostly used for implementing new programs or uh, developing uh, like new products and stuff like that. But it can definitely be implemented in your own personal projects, especially with a couple of different parts. So we're gonna go through and each slide is titled with what step we're gonna be on. So we're gonna start at the top with defining objectives. So you want to make sure that you know what you want out of your costume. Is this gonna be a drinking costume? Is this going to be a run around with your friends costume or is this a competition piece that you want to go in front of master level costumers with and have them judge you? So those are very different things that you need to establish at the beginning. So at the end, you don't have a drinking costume that you have rhinestones everywhere and you're going to be really sad because it's made of silk if you drop, like, spill something all over yourself, you know? Also keep in mind, your timeline, budget, how you're gonna get to the convention, and what convention you're wearing it to. Because something that you wanna wear here at San Japan is gonna be different from Katsukan, which is in February up north. So keeping in mind where you're wearing it, if it's a very tight convention space, maybe don't wear your bigger than life costume and armor. Or also with that, know that you're gonna need other handlers if you are committed to wearing it. So being able to not just plan for your costume, but plan around it of how many people you need to help you get into it or get out of it. So also another thing for bigger builds, first of all, Godspeed, good luck. <laughs> I wish you the best. <laughs> for bigger builds, always have an eject button. And this is, as an anxious person, I have that in every costume. But if you're not an anxious person, you may not think about it but you've never been at that convention in that big armor, dehydrated, running on a, like anxiety and adrenaline for 24 to 48 hours, just exhausted from lack of sleep. So you wanna make sure that if you need to get out of costume, especially a big costume fast, you're able to do so. Also keep in mind simple things like going to the bathroom, being able to walk and being able to sit. I don't know how many times I've seen a cosplayer not be able to fully walk, and you see this gorgeous armor, but all they can do is just T-pose because they can't actually move in it, you know? 
So there's definitely ways to make armor where you can actually like do stunts in them and stuff like that. There's WCS Australia winners from a couple of years ago. They did a full skit full of choreographed like fighting and stuff and it was beautiful and they were in full armor. Like it's possible. So make sure that you're able to move, you're able to sit and make sure you're able to drink water because water is very important. This is a step where you are collecting your references. You are going to become a greedy dragon and hoard every single reference you can find. You want them from the back, from the side, any small detail that might not be shown. So like Patima here on the left, you can see that if I wanted to make it and I wanted to make every layer, you can't always see every layer that she has. But you want to be able to know, oh, her pants, what look like pants, are actually shorts. Or down at the bottom right, the blue girl, that's Jester from Critical Role, she has a coat over an overdress, over an over skirt, over a dress. So knowing which layers, being able to actually see every piece of the costume, so you don't end up down the line and realize, oh, what I thought was one piece is really three. So being able to fully get the full scope of the build before you even start buying fabric for it. Developing a premise, that's mostly a business thing. You don't super need to do it. It could just be a good thought exercise to get your head in the right space. So an example that I often use is create a costume to my personal competition standards using three new construction techniques. All of those are achievable goals. I could look at a costume and say, yes, I did learn three new techniques for this costume. I created a costume and I am comfortable competing with this. So make sure all of those are clear cut. If you say, oh, I wanna get better at sewing. What do you define as better? You can say, oh, I wanna make sure that it's fully lined. That is a defined achievable goal. So keep that in mind too. Next is identify resources. This I kind of break up into two different things, physical resources and intellectual resources. So we have the physical resources of time before event, tools that you own or are borrowable or you're able to obtain. This is a big one because if you want to make this huge elaborate costume, but you're working in a corner of your bedroom, it's going to be a lot harder than for someone who has a full shop in their garage. So keeping in mind what you have available to yourself and what you know how to use already is important. And also keep in mind who is there to help you? Who in your life knows how to sew? Who can be that person to lace you up into your mock-up or make a duct tape pattern of you? Because making a duct tape pattern of yourself is not fun. <laughs> and I can tell you that from experience and I'm sure some of you can too. <laughs> And then intellectual research, that is your tutorial. That is looking up possibly historical references because right now the historical sewing community is booming and they have so many tutorials, it is glorious. And there are so many tutorials online. It's not like back in the early 2000s or so when all of the construction techniques were just ported by the few. But you can look up anything and you can get a tutorial on it. And if you can't, if you ask really nicely of a cosplayer, asking a specific question, they're likely going to answer you. Okay, so we're about halfway through. Does anyone have any burning questions? Okay. Now we get into a bit more of the more defined tasks. So we want to figure out exactly what we need to do for your costume. This is listing out every single piece that you're going to need. So we have an example over here of Ash. So listing out the hat, the black shirt, and all the different pieces. And you can definitely go into more detail. But just having that list, and it doubles as a packing list for whenever you're going to a convention. Which, trust me, for getting a wig when you live a couple hours away, not great, not a good feeling. And you want to also remember specialty items. So specialty makeup, so body paint or special safe, body safe adhesives are very important. Make sure you're not using something that is not body safe. 
And then specialty undergarments. I feel like I should have a slide just for specialty undergarments. Because if you want to do spandex, anything, and you have external bits, make sure you wear a dance belt. Make sure you purchase a dance belt because no one wants to see that. This is a family friendly convention. It is so important, I cannot stress that enough. And if you want to look at shapewear, corsets, especially for historical costuming, the silhouette is so important and that can translate really well to anime costumes as well because the silhouette is one of the most important things. It can really help with posing and things like that, but if you have the right like petticoat with the exaggerated shoulder pads and stuff like that, that really helps. Next up we have tracking and evaluation. Pretty sure at this point we've all heard of Cosplanner, the loved and loyal. That is such a good app. You can put in every piece, everything you need to buy. You can make sure that you have the uh, progress bar of how much you have done. And it's not the only option. There's also uh, PDF downloads or physical books you can now buy. I know Punish Props has a really good one. And if you aren't going in a cosplay specific and you're good with just any um, planning software, I really like Gantt charts. They show you what can, needs to be done first and what can be done at the same time. So like I can't paint my armor while the primer is still drying, but I can go and work on the wig at the same time that it's drying. And by the time I'm done with the wig, then I can go paint it. So if you're really like pressed for time, making sure that you're able to have all of that set up is really important to make sure you're using efficient time. Any questions so far? Yes. What was the name of the app you mentioned? A uh, cost planner. Cost planner? Yep. Any other questions? Okay. So the walkthrough that we're going to do is Jester Labora in her uh, level 10 outfit. And she's from Critical Role, in case you're wondering. Uh, we're gonna go through all of the different steps and kind of see how it would work with one specific costume. I chose this one because if done right, it could definitely be a competition costume and it just has a lot of different pieces. So first, the objectives that I personally would want I want to be able to fit the entire thing into a suitcase. I want to be able to travel with her. And so that means making sure if you are making like armor or anything that is like a big staff or sword, make sure you're able to fit it in a car or fit it in your suitcase. So that means knowing the limitations of what you are traveling with. Building in cooling pockets. I get warm very easily. We live in Texas. This is five layers, and I would die without something to cool me down. And I know uh, fursuiters and armor builders, they make, they have like fans inside. They, you could put pockets in to put cooling packs. There's a whole bunch of different ways. So also keep that in mind, whatever you're able to do to make yourself as comfortable as possible, because you're probably gonna be wearing this for a couple of hours up to like 12. So it's important that you're comfortable and you're able to move around like we mentioned before. So resources that I personally have, I have a domestic sewing machine and I have basic uh, leather working tools. I have enough space to be able to lay stuff out and cut it out probably on the living room floor. And all the different tutorials that I have access to that right now either I haven't done in a while or I know that I haven't done before and I need to learn. So knowing what you already are comfortable with and looking up whatever you need brushing up on or just to learn. Next we have a full breakdown. It's a lot of stuff. But like I said before, this is also really beneficial for when you are then going to the convention to make sure you don't forget the necklace that is shown only in the artist's rendition or 
a belt or something small that might just blend into the mess that is your crafting space. And then you get to the convention and realize, oh, I don't have my coat. So having a full list of clothing, I usually go from top down, inside out. Um, that's also a really good tip for if you are competing and you're talking with the judges, always keep yourself in order. Accessories, because accessories usually are pretty small, easy to lose. And then special makeup or special effects items. So getting the uh, face paint, getting the correct uh, blue makeup, because I don't think anyone really naturally has like a whole range of blues. If you do, I envy your stock. <laughs> Here is the breakdown that I would do, or that I did do, for Jester's outfit here. It has every single one at the top of the different layers that is released by the official artist of the show. And then on the very left of the four official ones is one that I made myself. Because thinking ahead of what the undergarments will need to look like to make it as easy as possible for me later. So we have the leggings. A corset because personally I would make one and wear one with this outfit and then the undershirt making sure especially now that if you're making gloves or something like this where the shirt is a part of the gloves installing zippers right here at the wrist in the seam so you're actually able to get your hands out to eat and then wash them and then put them back in if you aren't able to do that, bring gloves you can throw away. So just pack disposable gloves, put them on when you eat, and whatever you're gonna be doing. And then listing off the tiny little buttons, the, all the different beads, and especially the tiny details on the embroidery for the sleeves, the different uh, gradients that are needed for the different pieces. So you know, not only is it a whole bunch of fabric, but you also have to dye it, probably, or you got really, really lucky at the store. And then also, it's kind of hard to tell, but there is a tiny little list of all of the different pieces over on the right. Another one is, this one is for Saki Zou's, uh Romantic Jewel Sapphire. Uh, here you can see the different breakdown of different pieces. Up at the top right is two different ways to break down the dress into the skirt. So knowing all of the individual pieces before you go into it and realizing, oh, the petticoat is taking way more fabric than I thought. Hmm. So mentioning the always taking longer than you thought, there's this thing called the rule of pi. So whatever you think is gonna take you an hour, plan for three hours. Whatever you think is gonna take you however long, multiply it by pi, so it's like three times whatever, and that's likely what it's gonna take you. Humans are notorious for underestimating how long something is gonna take. And when you are working with costumes and you have a time constraint of I want to wear it at this con, it's gonna take much longer than you really think to make that costume. Okay, another one that I have here, it's a bit more historical based, and by a bit, I mean a lot. Uh, this is from Emma, uh, Victorian romance <coughs> anime. If you have not watched it, I highly recommend. Uh, this is pulling on a lot of historical references. So, going into it, I didn't know what any of this was. But if you really want that historical sil silhouette, you really need to just look at the undergarments that historically made it, so that later, when you have the final pieces, you're not wearing modern undergarments that won't give you the correct silhouette for later. Yeah. And then this is one last breakdown that I did. This is a Saki Zou's um, hydrangea dress. This is based on 1760s style court gown. And this is a mix of fantastical and historical. And the one point that I wanted to make here is again, setting your expectations at the beginning of what you want out of a costume. 
Because if you go into making something like this and you are thinking, I want it as historically accurate as I could possibly get it, and you make it strictly off of what is shown here, it will not be historically accurate because there are fantastical elements woven into the historical references. So once you end up with it, you'll realize, oh, this isn't what I wanted at all. But if you go into it realizing, this is the fantasy elements, and I want to implement them, and I'll implement them this way, or I just won't include them at all. So you, that's a call that you should be making at the beginning stages before you even start buying fabric. So we ended up going through it very quick. Are there any questions that you have? Yes. Would you recommend like uh, a starting kind of cosplay for people to do? What would you recommend? Mm, it's kind of difficult. I wouldn't be able to say a specific character. It really is based on what your past experience is making because I know some people start cosplaying already knowing sewing from quilting or have learned from a grandparent or something like that. But if you don't have any prior building experience or sewing or anything like that, I would recommend looking at something that you'd be able to partially thrift and then alter. So you can get used to working with fabric or working with foam, but not having to build it completely from scratch. I know that's pretty intimidating to get into. Yes? So you mentioned that you also compete. What are some beginner items, like, if say you're competing for the first time, what are some things in your craft that um, you might not think are important for the judges, but um, are like a certain sewing pattern or if the scene is on the inside or outside? Yeah, so I know the biggest uh, word of advice for competing in general is to always keep it as clean as possible. So finishing your raw edges, making sure there's no loose threads, things like that. Whatever you are making, make it as clean as possible. I have seen a school girl uniform win over a big armor build because the uniform was tailored so well and finished perfectly compared to the armor that had like visible hot glue. So whatever you're making, make sure that to the best of your abilities, you're making it clean. Is there yeah. Well, we think there are some very basic tools that we absolutely need to start cosplaying. If you want to go super basic, a hand sewing needle, some thread, and a bed sheet. <laughs> like, you could go to the thrift store, get some different colored bed sheets, and you're good to go. Follow the question. I have seen a full fursuit win a competition fully handsome, yes. It takes longer, but it is definitely possible. It is, like I've seen it done, it is amazing. I am terrified of that person, but <laughs> it's definitely possible. Yes. Difficulty brings you developing a premise. Okay, yeah. So developing, developing a premise is really just solidifying what you are wanting out of a costume and making it achievable. So there's this thing called SMART goals. I am out of practice and I don't know exactly what it is, but if you look up SMART goals, it gives you like timely, um, specific, things like that, to where you're able to set your goal and know that you have definitely achieved it. So if you are looking to build like Madoka from Madoka Magica or any character, and you say, I want it to be done by this date, I want to use this technique, and I want to do this, and make sure it can fit into this suitcase. And really having it of, I want it to like implement historical references, or something like that. So you know from the very beginning exactly what you are wanting from it, and how you know that you've achieved it. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Have you ever combined different aspects of a costume, like the shirt and the jacket, into one piece so it lightens it up and keeps it cooler so you're not wearing multiple layers? Yeah, that is a very good technique. I've seen it done a lot to where if a character is wearing an undershirt and then an overshirt and then a jacket on top of it, 
someone just makes one panel in the back of the jacket, combines all the layers together. That's also done a lot in theater to make changing a lot easier. So I would highly recommend it. And if it is something that you want to compete with, the judges would never dock you for it or anything like that. It's something that is making sure that they're able to work together though, like the materials. So like a woven versus a knit, it might go together a little weird. So you may have to work a bit with that. Yes. Now you said we wouldn't get docked points for combining the pieces. Would we get extra points for having each individual piece? That's kind of a hard one because it really does depend on the judge. But if I were judging and it kind of depends on the overall impact. So if you go in and you have like the five layers that the character has, but because you're wearing the five layers, you look way bulkier than they do because it's animated or it's like drawn. You know, it doesn't have the same effect. So really making sure that it wouldn't be bonus points just because you did it, but if the overall effect is good, then it would help your case. Oh. Yes. Let's say I wanted to combine two cosplays that I purchased and uh, I sew them together and you know make altercations on my own. Does that count as making my own cosplay? Like for competition purposes? At that point, because of the bot nature of it, I would contact the director of the, cos the contest because that's really called depending on different <coughs> contest rules. Uh, make sure, because like, I know some contests, they have to have um, printed material or like a reference that it's not just original, but it really depends on what the competition asks for. And that's another thing is always make sure you're reading the rules of the competition you're entering, because there's so many times that I've seen people get disqualified for something that they didn't even consider because they didn't read the rules. So that's really individual based on which convention you're going to. Yes. What about shoes? Shoes and trends. Do you have to like make them for the cosplay for a contest or is it something that you could purchase and paint or? Usually shoes you have to plan to make shoes. Yeah, usually shoes aren't counted against you of like, oh, you didn't make your shoes. You didn't like learn how to cobble shoes together. <laughs> but like, if you did make your shoes and you're like, oh, well, I looked up the sandal making technique from the 1500s. They'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to count that in, like, okay. judging. But they're not going to be like, oh, you didn't sew your wig together from fibers, and you didn't, like, cobble your own shoes. It's kind of just, like, admitting when you didn't make something, because they can't tell. But, like, no one's going to be like, oh, you didn't make your shoes. Like, <laughs> okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And, like, if you did alter them, that's really cool and really good. So definitely mention that because a lot of times when I've seen shoes that people have altered, I didn't realize that they actually alter them because usually they're done pretty well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So speaking of shoes, what are some tips for planning your alteration of like your shoes? Because do you go in with like, like how would you plan to like put fabric over the shoe or mm -hmm. things like that? Yeah. So first, uh, I would always look at the base of what shoe that you're trying to make. So going back, if I can go back to Sapphire here, I am planning to alter the shoes for this specific thing. I'm not learning how to build heels. That's not mm -hmm. in my plans for myself. So if you're looking for the toe shape and the heel shape, you're looking at the bare bones of a shoe and then seeing what you're able to alter. I have definitely gone to Goodwill, gotten a pair of shoes, cut down everything except the bare bones and then build it back up. So seeing what the bare bones are and tutorials. There's so many shoe altering tutorials, like boot covers and there's ways to make boot covers so that you can wear one pair of boots and then just make a whole bunch of different covers for it and it'll work multiple costumes. So definitely look up tutorials for that specific type of shoe that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And it doesn't also just have to be planning. I love talking shop, so if you have any cosplay questions. Yeah. Did you make your own Netflix? 
Yeah, so these are made of two, uh, two millimeter EVA foam. It's hollow inside and it has a warbler base with two, I think they're nuts, inside that um, they screw into the headband. And then like all of the, um, all the detailing for texture is hot glue. Wow. Hot glue is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Hi, so I do have forms like that that I made that are really heavy. Mm -hmm. I can't get them to stay on my head. What would be something I could do to keep them up? <laughs> yeah, so what you're probably going to want to look at is like, is it under a wig or under, or like with your natural hair? With my natural hair. Okay. Hot glue. <laughs> no, you think you're joking. I have seen some. I was joking. Yeah, I don't do that yet. Yeah, no, I've seen people like panic before going on to stage and they're like, oh, my bracer fell off, like the straps aren't working, just hot glue it to my arm. I'm not kidding. Oh, it, don't do that. Do not do that. Go on without the bracer, it'll be fine. Anyway, going back to the antler or the horns. Um, you may want to look into using two different uh, headbands, so mounting it to two separate ones so it has, uh, instead of just having one band, it has two to kind of stabilize front and back. And there's also a couple of different tutorials on um, making a really big uh, ponytail wig that goes into making like kind of like a helmet sort of thing that might help. I think it was Kim Patsu that has it. I think they're looking too. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what are some tips of when you have literally have no idea how to style a wig? Like, uh, I'd like to style like any recommendation. What you would recommend? Yeah. So if you're ever looking at a wig and you're like, hmm, I have no idea what to do with this, uh, just looking up wig tutorials on YouTube. There are so many, and especially from like, I think Art of Wigs has a lot, and like looking at the overall shape of it, like again, silhouette is really important. So if it's like spiky, knowing how to build in that volume, or if it's really long and sleek, mm -hmm. investing in silicone spray, like the mane and tail stuff, because long wigs, it's so tangled. You look at them, you breathe, and they're tangled. And just learning about the different fibers that it is and how it reacts with heat. Heat is also a really good friend for working with fibers as long as they are heat resistant. Okay, thank you. Does that help? Okay. Yes. Um, okay, I'm building a Gundam costume and I bought these little fans to put in it. What else would you recommend to keep it cool uh, as far as uh, uh, like keep the, because I'll be wearing foam basically. Yeah. And I just want to stay cool inside of it. I what, what else would you recommend I would get? I would personally recommend, I know, I can't remember the name of it exactly, but if you, in whatever you're wearing underneath, like the, probably under armor or something like that, if you would sew in little pockets that fit like ice packs okay. or something like that, make sure you're not just putting like ice packs in there, like actually insulating it a little. Yeah. And that you can change them out. There's also these things that are like ice cloths or something uh -huh. where you can wipe it down in some chemical reaction that is way above my knowledge. Where it's like you wipe it over your neck and it cools you down really fast. Okay. So having things like that, really good. Okay. And making sure you're hydrated. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the problems I have is I make my dress so then I make a lot of dresses. But then by the time I'm done with the dress, I think it take months, mm -hmm. my weight has changed. Mm -hmm. And it goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. Is there any tips for like certain cosplays that could, if you gain a little or lose a little, it would be fine? Are there any tricks to it that you can plan for? There are a couple of different things. I would look into kind of um, theater tricks for when they're using the same costumes for different actors. There are a couple of different things that you can build into your costume to wear like side lacing on both sides so you're able to let it out or let it back in. Uh, building in extra seam allowance at the very beginning so that if it like goes up or goes down, you're able to do like the side seams and things like that. Um, especially like from about mid, like right here, all the way down to through the waist into the hips. That is gonna be your best friend of like where to place the ease mm -hmm. and also in the back. 
Okay. Does that help? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Okay, I'm gonna be here for another like 15, 20 minutes until they kick me out. So if you have any good questions, if you want a closer look at any of these breakdowns, just let me know and I hope you have a really good con. Thank you guys for coming, I really appreciate it.